I'll start with the obvious. Uh, we're looking at a 137 aspect ratio, yes. which we don't often get the opportunity to look at anymore. Um, and in addition to that, <coughs> this film also has sequences in 185 and 240. Uh, how did the idea come about to, to play with and incorporate these different aspect ratios? Um, actually, it originated with Wes Anderson, our director, and um, he came up with it during prep and, and came to me and he said he had an idea how to uh, uh, visually delineate the different time periods that we had in our film. And uh, the 137 was a, a format that was used uh, back in the 1930s and uh, so we shot our 1930 section in that format and uh, the 60s uh, we shot anamorphic and then the 80s was uh, 185 so we did incorporate three uh, different aspect ratios. Uh, I was a little skeptical. I don't know if I'm, am I echoing here? I can't tell, but um, I, I was a little skeptical that this would work, but we played with it. We did a test and it worked beautifully. And um, so we went ahead and, you know, put that into play. After years of working, especially in the 240 frame uh, and also 185, was it difficult to wrap your head around framing for 137? <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's a whole different way of approaching uh, composition. And uh, at first I was, uh, you know, a little nervous about it, being used to a wider frame. But um, we quickly kind of, Wes and I both quickly got into it. And, uh, you know, we, I mean, we had a lot of fun with it. It was kind of a whole new way of, of shooting a movie for us. And uh, we had studied a lot of uh, movies from the 30s, uh, the Ernst Lubitsch comedies and Grand Hotel and movies like that. And um, so we kind of familiarized ourselves with what um, other directors and DPs had done back in those times and uh, just decided we were going to try to push it a little bit and, and try to make some unusual compositions, you know, shots with a great deal of headroom, which you don't ordinarily do. And, um, you know, the challenge is always with Wes, he, he doesn't shoot a lot of coverage, so. Um, Hey, David. <laughs> uh, so uh, he likes to get everything within one shot and oftentimes get a lot of actors in one shot. So that's uh, on an anamorphic frame, that's a lot easier than uh, 137. So uh, that was one of the challenges that we, we had to do. And you know, people sitting around a table or in the prison sequences, you know, uh, you'll see a lot of shots where there's a lot of people that we try to cram into the frame. So it was, it was a challenge, but we both uh, really liked it and interestingly enough when we did uh, Royal Tenenbaums uh, years ago uh, Wes because the house was, was such a vertical type house and, and he said you know maybe we should shoot this in, a, in that aspect ratio and um, we, we kind of did a little exploration in that and at that time which was you know at least 10 years ago uh, it was difficult to get it projected and, and it's only today with the new technology that uh, we're able to uh, pull it off like we did. So, um, you know, if, if Real Ten Bombs was 10 years later, we may have shot it in uh, 137. Who knows? What's, is there a discussion that goes into like when the camera will just sort of make a move on its own? Uh, or is it just sort of a gut instinct in the that you, that you go with on the day? Uh, it's all pretty much figured out beforehand, and, and I think Wes likes that style because, uh, like when you're doing a scene with two actors and we're whip panning back and forth or, or whatever, um, it, it just keeps everybody in the scene, and um, you know, he can cut on that whip pan occasionally. If you watch closely, there is a cut slipped in there. Uh, if he wants to connect two different performances. Uh, but I think it gives, uh, you know, the, every scene a little bit of a visual uh, uh, urgency. And he constantly is trying to get the actors to say things faster, you know, so that it often might seem that they're, uh, when you're shooting, that it's a little unnatural, you know, that everyone's talking so fast. And da -da 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 -da. But in the context of a movie, it all seems very uh, fluid and very natural. So um, you know, somehow it all works out. And, and, and you know, they slip cuts in there when they can. But uh, it's all pretty much figured out beforehand. You know, that's that's how he likes to do it, for sure. Um, you've got a good string of movies going with Paul Feig these days. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, soon to be released is Spy, which marks your first digitally acquired feature. Yes, that's true. Um, why go digital for that project? Well, uh, Paul and I had done Bridesmaids and The Heat, and we had shot film, and Paul and I were both film people, and um, we wanted film on Spy, but the studio didn't want to give us film, and um, so they said no, and then I kind of went back and dug in my heels and fought again for film. Uh, and I lost, and Paul wanted film too, uh, and, but we shot it with the Alexa, and um, it was a really great experience. Uh, I, I was very happy with the outcome, uh, and we were in many situations where we were on the streets at night, or we were in these very dark tunnels, um, and the Alexa performed beautifully. So, you know, I, I, I've been kind of making that transition to digital cameras. I shoot a lot of commercials with the Alexa. And, um, you know, it's certainly, I think the digital cameras have come a long way and, and they can make some beautiful images. Uh, and in certain situations, they can probably outperform film. I mean, that said, it's a different process. I still kind of lean towards the look of film, but uh, I'm very happy with how Spy came out and it was shot digitally. So, you know, I think there are two different tools that, depending on your film, and various other factors, you can make a decision. But 